Esther chapter 5. Esther chapter 5, and we want to read the verses 1 through 3. Esther chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight, and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom. Now I would like for you to look in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now our thought this evening is on how to pray effectively. James speaks of the, uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And so our thoughts this evening is how that we can pray more effectively. And I had originally begun this study uh, looking up some thoughts on, on the worship, but in the course of things came to Esther and saw in her a lesson here on effectual prayer. And so I want us to notice some things that it mentions here and, and understand that the context that when Mordecai had requested that she go in and appear before the king and let him know what Haman had done. And she said, well, I haven't been called in to the king. And it's basically, it's against the law. It's punishable by death to come in uninvited, uh, except those to whom he extends his scepter, uh, which was a, a sign of, of grace and acceptance, and they could proceed on in uh, to his presence, which is what uh, took place here. This picks up with Esther and coming into his presence. And one of the things I want us to notice is in the very first verse here, now it came to pass on the third day, that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. She was the queen. And so uh, she put on her royal apparel. She dressed for the occasion, if you will. She dressed as a queen, being the queen. And I believe the thought for that, for us, is that as members of the Lord's church, and as a church, we have been espoused in marriage unto the king. 2 Corinthians 11, uh, verse 2, uh, Paul said there that, um, so I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Let me get over there so I can read it and avoid misquoting something. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And so we are said to be the bride, the espoused wife of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, much is made in the book of uh, the Song of Solomon of uh, the typology there. Uh, 
the Solomon's king is a type of uh, Christ, and the Shulamite uh, woman is a type of his church, the bride, and their courtship and marriage. And uh, so we need to think in those terms that to come into the presence of God, to approach the throne of grace, he says we can come boldly. And, and I've said before, uh, to come with, with confidence, not boastfully, not braggingly, not rashly, but we can come uh, with a confidence uh, before the throne of God that we will find grace. Esther wasn't sure if she was going to find grace or not. Uh, we have been assured that we can come and we will find grace and acceptance when we do. And so we read in the scriptures that what is our apparel? Well, one of the things, well, in uh, Romans 13, I had some thoughts, had some scripture come to mind that I didn't have written down in my notes, so I'll try to get to that in a moment. But Romans 13, verse 14, he says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not for the provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. He says, Put on Christ. Uh, uh, this is our apparel, Galatians 3.27. And I found this one most appropriate. Galatians 3.27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And so we are said that uh, here is the church. Baptism is the gateway into the membership of the Lord's church. It is the prerequisite to church membership. And that as such we become the body of Christ as His bride. As, the, as Adam said of Eve, this is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. Uh, this is of my body. And so... We are the body of Christ. Uh, he is our head, and we are uh, members in particular. But also, as such, we are said to be His wife. And so, to put on Christ, to put Him on as our husband, as our head, uh, and, and the righteousness of Christ, which is imputed to us by faith, but not only that imputed righteousness, uh, but this was the verse I was thinking of that I didn't have my notes in Revelation uh, chapter 19 when it comes to the wedding Revelations chapter 19 verse 7 said let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and the, his wife hath made herself ready. For to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Not the imputed righteousness of Christ, but the righteousness of saints. As we put on Christ, we put on His righteousness, but it also speaks of putting off the old man and putting on the new man. This, this is speaking of our personal walk with God and our righteousness uh, toward Him. And so we are to put on this apparel. This is our queenly apparel. Uh, the apparel of the bride of Christ. Um, our access to the throne is ours through Christ. We have access. 
uh, Esther had access because she was married to the king. He sat on the throne. She had access to the throne because she was married to the king. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who has ascended back into heaven, who sits right now at the right hand of the throne of God in heaven, and we have access to that throne through Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans 5. Verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we have access uh, in Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. And so the Hebrews said that we can come boldly before the throne of grace that we might find help and grace in our uh, time of need. Uh, so Esther here, there was a time of need and she came to the throne, she came to the king. Uh, as we read in Galatians, it equates being baptized with putting on Christ, thus as a member of one of his churches. We have this royal apparel. We approach the throne, and I think part of this means as we, we come in his name. How many times Jesus taught us to uh, come and to ask in his name. The things that we do uh, in this world, we have authority uh, to act in his name. And this includes when we come to God, when we approach the throne, uh, that we have that permission to use his name. And that's got the idea here, putting on Christ, putting on our royal apparel um, is to come to the throne in his name. Uh, being married to the king has advantages and privileges and as we said it gives us access. Um, and we see in Esther uh, where the king saw Esther, the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. And the idea of the golden scepter was that of grace, the extending of grace and her coming and touching it. Uh, her, his acceptance of her and her acceptance of uh, his grace to approach. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 here uh, Paul is comparing back and forth the relationship between the wife and the husband and the church and Jesus Christ. Uh, in verse 22, he says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. And so Christ loves his church. The king here loved Esther. And so she was accepted in his sight. She was received because he loved her. 
And we need to understand that when we come before uh, the throne of God in prayer, because that's what we're doing, we are approaching, as it were, the very throne of God in heaven. We've been made accepted in the Beloved. And in prayer, we're coming into the very presence of God. And while he says we have access and we can come boldly, we can have confidence, yet it is not something that we should do rudely or rashly, uh, but with uh, consideration and a forethought as we approach. Uh, Esther put some thought into this before she went uh, to see the king. And we should too. And so we see uh, the king's acceptance here. And verse 3, And the king said to her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? You know, that's... When we come to the throne of God in, in prayer, and he receives us and asks that, what a blessing. You know, what... The, the access, the power that we have. Queen Esther had power because of her being loved of the king. Esther was given permission to ask anything up to half the kingdom because he loved her. We've been given permission to ask what we desire. Uh, John 15. Verse 7. Jesus said, if, I abide, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Uh, chapter 16. Verse 23. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Look at the, the power that God has given us access to because he loves us, gave himself for us. He's chose to, chosen us and called us. He's placed us in His church that we might be a spouse to Him. And what a blessing. Now in Matthew, let me, Matthew 16, Matthew 18 is the one I'm looking for. Matthew 16, he talks about, uh, I'll build my church, gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But in chapter 18, uh, again he's speaking to his disciples in church capacity. In verse 19, he says, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so here... Speaking to his church again as we are gathered together in his name. Whereas we is two or three and, and are agreed. And here is something of the effectual and uh, effectiveness of prayer. That we come together as a church, married to him, putting on that apparel. And I believe part of that apparel is that unity and love that we have one for another. 
that when we come together, if we can be agreed on something and we approach God to, in prayer to ask Him, He says it will be none to us. Uh, so we see here Esther prepared herself to approach the king. We need to prepare our minds and hearts to approach the throne of God's grace. Uh, and especially when we come in together as a church and in worship. And notice Esther's approach. If it seemed good to the king, if it pleased the king. And one of the things I notice here too, that the king summoned her to approach. He says, what do you want? What's your request? But you know, before she made her request known to the king, she prepared a banquet for the king. Chapter 5, verses 4 through 8, And Esther answered, If it seemed good unto the king, let the king and Haman come uh, this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. So she prepared a banquet. Um, and she says, here it's a, in verse 8 if I found favor in the sight of the king and if it pleased the king to grant my petition to perform my request let the king Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them and I will do tomorrow as the king has said in other words I'll make my request known but said first I want you to come to a banquet you know my original thought had begun with the idea of worship and I believe the many misconceptions that we have about worship, uh, and I say we, not necessarily you and I here present uh, tonight, but uh, many, much of Christianity in general. Because you hear people talk about, you know, they come to church, and, and we call it a worship service. And people leave the worship service, and say, well, I didn't get anything out of that. You're not supposed to get anything out of the worship. Worship is what we come and we offer up to God. It's what He gets. Amen. You know, people have it all wrong. They think they come in God, you know, and it's where God feeds them and where God blesses them and, and they get something out of it. Now, worship is that which is offered up to God. Worship is what is His due. Uh, in Revelation chapter 4 Revelation chapter 4 verses 10 and 11 says the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him and part of the idea of worship as the idea of us prostrating ourselves before him Humbling ourselves, if you will. I don't think uh, it's necessary so much that we physically get down and, and, and lay ourselves flat on the floor or something like that. But to mentally, spiritually, emotionally lay ourselves before God, to humble ourselves, to empty ourselves uh, before Him, and to, to worship Him. And said they, they worship him that live forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. In other words, they are acknowledging and praising God for who he is. You know, I don't think we spend enough time considering the greatness, the power, the majesty of God. And one has to do that to truly worship Him because worship is giving Him the glory that is due to Him 
for being who He is and what He is. And worship comes from the fact then that being the Almighty, being the great and powerful and wonderful and majestic, the holy and righteous one, yet He has looked upon us with favor and mercy and grace. How many times in the scriptures, David or, or different ones said, Who am I? Who am I that the Lord should even notice that I'm here? You know, He is great and you know He's the King and He's upon the throne. He is God. He's the creator of everything. The sun, the moon, the stars, all the other planets and everything in their orbits and everything is doing exactly what He has purposed them to do. And He holds all these things together and by Him all things consist. And yet He noticed me. And set His love and affection upon me. And has extended grace to me. Oh, to come into His presence. Isaiah, when he was in the temple praying, and God's presence filled the temple, and the angelic host to His train filled the temple. And immediately Isaiah was struck uh, with, with fear. He said, oh, woe is me, I'm undone. You know, I, basically he was, you know, I'm a sinner. And, and here I am in the presence in the same room. Here God has filled the temple with His glory. And, uh, but that should be our, an attitude of reverence and worship before God. In, in Revelation chapter 5, uh, verse 11, I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy! is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto Him that sitteth upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And the four B said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Worship. I mean, God has these four living creatures that surround the throne. They cease not day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, which is to come. He is worthy to receive worship. And I think we should precede any requests that we have of God uh, with worship, with praising Him and acknowledging Him for who He is, what He is, and giving thanks for the things uh, that He has done. Uh, when we come and we sing we should sing songs that lift up our uh, praise for Him and our thanksgiving. And then when we pray, and there's a couple of passages of Scripture that deal with this, uh, and we want to look at these Philippians 4, 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing, that is, don't be anxious about things, but instead of being anxious, worrying, or fretting, he says, In everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And so, when we offer up to God our prayer, and as Esther then did after the banquet, 
that she had set for him, then again he said, okay, now what is your request? What is it that you desire of me up to half the kingdom? And so she told him. But my, my thoughts, I don't want to follow the, the uh, story there in Esther so much other than that portion of it that I believe uh, gives us some insight and understanding in how we are to approach God in prayer. I believe there were some lessons there. She uh, put on her royal apparel. She uh, made herself ready to be presented to the king. And, and so that's what we need to do. We need to put on Christ. We need to come in His name. We need to uh, prepare ourselves to present ourselves before God. We need to offer up worship, praising Him. For who He is. I think that also helps to put us in the right mind, the right frame. As we come before Him to make our requests known. And as we read here, it said, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. In 1 Timothy 2.1, Paul says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Now he's applying this in particular, he said because there was some uh, that had made shipwreck of the faith. And so he says, because of this, because there's some that have made shipwreck, we need to pray for all men. And, and so we take this passage and, and we, as he does here, for kings and those that are in authority, we're to pray for those who are in authority over us. Uh, pray for pastors, pray for teachers, pray for kings, pray for our government officials. Uh, he lists these two. And as I was thinking about this and reading this, because, you know, we pray for those that are in authority. Sometimes we pray the Lord would take them out of office. You know, uh, and things like that. But one of the things he said were to give thanks for them. When he said here, in praying for those that are in authority, he said, give thanks for them. Uh, that is sometimes hard to do. But uh, that, as we pray and we think of the different aspects of prayer, the different elements of prayer, types of prayer, he mentions supplications, intercession, uh, giving of thanks, uh, and prayers, and what these mean. And so, you know, to lay a petition before the Lord to a supplication to is to petition him to lay a petition before him this is what I would want uh, intercession either we're intercessing or asking God to intercede into a situation uh, to uh, on, on behalf uh, intercede on behalf of us or intercede on behalf of someone else we're in prayer, we can be interceding on somebody else's behalf and asking a petition of God uh, for someone else. The giving of thanks, to be grateful. Uh, you know, we, we ought not to come to God and ask for more and more and more and never be thankful for the things He's already given us. Now, uh, Jesus one time healed ten lepers. And only one of them uh, returned and thanked him. Uh, many times we are like that. God blesses us and, and grants us our requests, but uh, we don't stop and, and we, we go on rejoicing in, in what He's given us and, and don't stop to uh, give Him thanks for it. So the praise, the adoration, the thanksgiving, uh, as well as our supplications and intercession and prayers. 
Now notice in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, John says, this is the confidence that we have in Him. Now, we said there in Hebrews, we said, let's come boldly. The idea of with confidence. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. A petition, a request, those things that we have requested. As uh, the king asked Esther, what is it that you, what is your petition? Uh, he said, what wilt thou, what is thy request? And uh, he said again, grant my petition to perform my request. He said, what is thy petition? Uh, and it will be granted, what is thy request, even to half the kingdom, and it shall be performed. And so, as we come and we make our requests known to God, we petition Him. We are to petition, say, if we know we pray according to His will. And I think that's part of that preparation, preparing ourselves uh, in the right frame of mind. And so Esther, uh, chapter 7, and verse 1 through 3. So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee, and what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of the kingdom. Then Queen Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king. So here she puts that if, she qualifies it. If I have found favor. And if it pleases the king to do so. Even though he'd given her permission to ask, yet she qualified what she was asking. You know, Jesus, when he prayed, said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And that should always be our attitude uh, before God the Father. We submit our desires and requests to the wisdom and judgment of God. We make our requests not, but and he is probably if two or three of you, if you can be agreed, and I think that is a kind of a protective element there, so that it, we're as James said sometimes says you have not because you ask not, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that you might consume it upon your own lust. And so we need to qualify. We need to make sure that the things that we're asking are, are appropriate. And we are submitting ourselves to the wisdom of God and the judgment of God upon these things. And that's what Esther did. He said, if I found favor, and if it pleased the king, you know, not my will, but thy will be done. So, when we take the time to properly prepare ourselves to come into the presence of God, to come in an attitude of worship, humility, especially as we come as a church and we come in worship and we come in unity and agreement, that we put on our apparel, our royal apparel. We, we put on Christ. We come in His name. Acknowledging that God through His Son Jesus Christ has given us permission, has given us authority to come and to ask. We ought never to presume or assume those things 
but to put on in preparation for coming to Him in prayer. To humble ourselves, to be thankful and grateful, to praise Him, to worship Him, and to make our requests known unto Him. I believe when we take the time and we think about it, and, and there are times we talk about flare prayer or something, you know, in the just in the instant, in the moment, when we, we cry out to God for help. And, and that's appropriate, that is okay. But at other times when we have the time, we should take that time to prepare and to put on that royal apparel as Queen Esther and to approach God humbly and to have Him extend that scepter of grace to us and to reach out and touch that scepter uh, as we approach and to make our requests known to Him. There's much here, and I believe we have just kind of scratched the surface, but it gives us some things to consider and, and think about. As I was reading that about Queen Esther and how she, she made that, that preparation, Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. You know, we put on Christ and we approach the throne and we await his pleasure. May the Lord use this to instruct and encourage us. You know, and these are some thoughts about worship. Originally I thought about worship. And that is what we offer up to God. What we get that is more in line with the, the idea what people are looking for is found in the word fellowship. The edification, sanctification, and the sharing uh, together with one another. Uh, that's what we get. And God blesses us and answers our prayers through the fellowship that we have with Him and with one another. And God working through our brothers and sisters in Christ answers our prayers many times and uh, we receive the things that we need the encouragement the edification uh, from one another all right let us stand together